All right, before we let you go, Bert, let's spend five minutes talking about the Patriots who are on the opposite coast from you. But I, I want to see if your opinion has changed. Uh, the offensive line seems to be a jumbled mess here the first few days of training camp. they got a long way to go before they figure out which five guys are actually going to block for their starting quarterback. Has your opinion changed about when Drake May is actually going to become this team's starter? Um, no. Um, I I think I said said to you guys, like I, I would set the over-under at November 1st. I don't think he's going to start week one. Um, I think the offensive line is a very real part of the equation um, because so much of this, guys, is like going back to what um, he was coming out of North Carolina and what they found when they got him on the practice field, that he really had no formal footwork training that, you know, I mean, almost his entire football life has been played out of the shotgun. Um, all that stuff, like there's a learning curve there and you need to create new habits and those new habits need to settle. And you don't want to put a guy in a position where he's going to, he's going to regress. And so how does a guy regress? Well, he regresses by getting put in situations where everything is jumbled in a mess around him. Um, you know, I think the, he's not as raw as Jordan Love was coming out, but I think a lot of Green Bay people would tell you if Jordan Love got thrown out there in his first year or his second year, it might have ruined him. And so I think they have to be cognizant of that. And being cognizant of that is is one, like knowing where his development is, right? Like knowing how much progress he's made. And then number two, uh, being realistic with yourself about what's around him and whether or not you're going to be able to support him the way that he's need, he needs to be supported. That's not to say he's not going to be able to play for three years, but um, I do think he, and I do think he has some things that Mac didn't, like where he's got the escape patch to, to make plays athletically, to make things right when, even when, things look wrong for him, which is what Mahomes and Josh Allen and some of these other guys had um, that helped aid in their development and kind of cheat the learning curve. Uh, but I, I do think they're going to be patient with him. Well, you mentioned Josh Allen. We know from watching Hard Knocks the offseason in New York Giants, Joe Shane, who came from Buffalo, yep. as you know, and Brian Dayball, who was responsible, largely responsible for developing Josh Allen. Those guys were willing, Bert. They were willing to trade the sixth overall pick for number three. They were willing to yep. trade a 2025 first and more to have Drake May come in and start. So these are guys who understand talent. I just feel like I just disagree. I'm just mad at everybody. All right, the season having started, <laughs> I'm mad at everybody for being too conservative with Drake May. They were And they were going to bring him to New York, oh, a pretty small media market, and throw him into the hopper. So why are they wrong in the Patriots with Elliot Wolf and Gerard Mayo right? Well, did they say in there they were going to start him? They didn't uh, say they were going to start. Uh, they, him. Daniel they, Jones is going to be gone. Uh, absolutely. No, they were going to. No, they were going to play. G, their their plan was to play Daniel Jones for a year and then and then flip it to Drake. Okay, okay, so they're stupid. Then they're stupid too because everyone's uh, stupid. Yeah, but you, is yeah, you know, pretty much about here. because like you can't bring it. If Daniel Jones, you, you trade up and you bring in. You trade up to three. Mm -hmm. You don't help. You don't help the offense. Your help to the offense is trading up to three to get a quarterback who you then sit down. I just feel like Bird. You raised a good point, though. He's like, got so it, much. It he's got more than people are are, are giving him credit for it, even yeah. with the rawness. You 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 did raise a good point, though, which is like I think one that can make you feel good about Drake May watching that show. You can remember back to the stuff we said in April. The two teams that were most aggressive trying to get Drake May were the Giants and the Vikings. And that's two pretty good quarterbacks, guys, and, and Brian Dayball and Kevin O'Connell. Like, you had two guys there that really know the position, that have been able to develop the position at a pretty high level. And so, you know, I, I think you'd take that into account. Um, but I would look at, like, Ohio O'Connell is handling J.J. McCarthy in Minnesota. It's sort of similar, you know? Like, he's established – markers for JJ he's and it's it's but, very detailed what but they're doing Bert, but it's like Drake you're gonna hit May, these markers before we put you out there Bert as you know uh, to bring it full circle you watch JJ McCarthy uh, at Michigan yeah. Drake Mace better yeah. than JJ McCarthy mm -hmm. significantly you should just want to watch him yes that's that's uh, what I, this is I, I, he should play he should play I, yeah. I don't I, want you get but uh, Bert my point to Michael and I would say else. I would say this the one thing the one thing he does like again like I do think that that ability to escape and make plays on his own which Mac really didn't have that ability I think gives you some level of flexibility where it's 
you know, number one, number two, if it's not there, Drake, just go and ju- just just go make a play. It does give you some flexibility there. But again, like the fundamental changes that they've made with him, um, you don't want to screw up months of work um, that you've put in to trying to and trying to set him up for a 10 year career. And you also um, don't want to mess up the one swing you have to get this kid on the right path to being a starter. I mean, right, you, you have, right. hopefully the Patriots don't have another high draft pick to take a quarterback like this again. So you have one chance with your one franchise quarterback that you have drafted and are going to try and build a team around. Why take the risk of ruining him, hey, regardless you know, of what his physical is, abilities is about, are? Guys, I just want you to live, okay? I love you guys both. Hey, Bert, you disagree I love, with that. Bert, Michael, Bert, you disagree with that the Packers hand Jordan Love. But, oh, the Packers had Aaron Rodgers. And then b- before, when Aaron Rodgers sat, the Packers had Brett Favre. The Patriots don't have that luxury. Yeah, and I agree with you, Bert. I agree with you and the coaches who say, if I had if I had uh, my druthers, I'd rather have a young guy sit. But you don't. You don't have that luxury. You're in a desperation mm-hmm. mode. And by the way, I love you guys. I love, Bert, I love you. Uh, RJ, uh, Wallach, love you guys. Life is for living. I want you to go out there. Okay. Take some chances. <laughs> take some risks. If you like that clip, and how could you not? Check out more videos from Toucher and Hardy here. Point slightly up and to the left. For more Patriots analysis and opinion, hit this playlist. Point slightly down and to the left. And for the latest from the Sports Hub, download at 985thesportshub.com.